record it and then I'll go over here. Yeah. There we go. I don't need to be a co-host. I just wanted to hit the record. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to, was trying to like, take it off. Is, 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 is that filling with power? Of <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to like take it off like as Noah's trying to do all this stuff. Oh, <laughs> no, no. It is really helpful sometimes, especially when I'm taking minutes and someone like comes in. And stuff, so. Cool. so we're going to start. It's okay. uh, 7.35 in the meantime. So Welcome, everybody. This is the Community Outreach Subcommittee of the Northampton Police and Review Commission. Today is Monday, January 11, 2021. Uh, New Year for everybody, 7.35. This meeting uh, is gonna, it's over Zoom and is being recorded, which constitutes, uh, at the end, public record. Um, we're going to start with a cultural order um, in Noah, can you do the, the roll call? Yes. Dan? Here. Carol? Here. Javier? Here. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Noah. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And uh, everybody was able to get take a look to the minutes that Noah sent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you know, if if you if anybody didn't have time to do it, we can just table it and do it next meeting. That's that's certainly not an issue. Um, you know, I skimmed I skimmed through and didn't have any like major. I didn't think I didn't have any corrections. So perfect. And neither I. Carol, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Okay, yeah. so let's do something. Let's table the that for next. Okay. And do Sorry. It's, it's okay. Up. Life is so busy. <laughs> it, it is, yeah. So we're going to table uh, the April of the minutes for next week. So in that way, I also skim it. I'm grateful that we're going to table just because I really want to read it. Um, cool. So we are cruising to item number two. But before that... Um, uh, I'm going to just make a statement in relation to a similar statement that I did last meeting because of the spirit of this uh, meeting being outreach. Uh, we usually are not putting public comment within the agenda, but we certainly welcome any person who wants to make a comment uh, to the outreach subcommittee in relation to, to outreach and the work that we should be doing or we should not be doing as a part of the conversation rather than just as a specific allocation at the beginning, because I think all falls in the same uh, level of importance. And that's among the conversation that we're having in the audience being participant. So uh, I see a hand up. Uh, we're going to start, we're going to receive that comment right now. So the phone number ending in 7081. Uh, if you want to make any comment now that we're going to start talking about um, outreach and work that we're going to be doing, that's the time. Uh, Booker knows way better than me what do you have to press in a cell phone to be able to unmute it. Noah, can you try to unmute? There yep. you are. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I can sum this up in one sentence. If you were doing outreach at the Cahill Housing Authority, the Cahill Building of the Northampton Housing Authority, I strongly advocate for you not to gather together people, plural, at the same time to do separate interviews, okay? Absolutely, doing mm -hmm. okay. sort of doing individualized rather than group, which which makes uh, makes total sense having in mind the context that we're living nowadays. I I, I personally really appreciate that comment. Mm -hmm. I am Hildegard Friedman, G sixty eight, at Cahill, and I am at four one three. Five eight two seven zero eight one. That's my phone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hitler. Always your comments are highly, greatly appreciated. 
Noah, can you make me the co-host? Yes. I know Dan wants power and all that. But... <laughs> I'm desperate for it. <laughs> Can't just see it. Cool. So we're gonna we're gonna move to report back from subcommittee members about possible organizations, uh, advocates that should get the outreach document that we're working on. I mean, we talk about this. We pretty much this is a simple brainstorming of mm -hmm. organizations that we know we're aware of on an advocate, a specific advocate that we would like to to try to get in touch sooner than later to be able to move this. So I open the floor uh, about this. Okay. So the two major ones that um, that I know that we've had some uh, work with already are the Wildflower, sorry, <clears throat> the Wildflower Alliance, which used to be the RLC, um, and Sean Donovan, who's shown really, he's really committed to um, to really getting the testimony of folks that that that, that group works with, um, and has done it um, by reaching out to them and collecting statements and then organizing them thematically. Um, and I think that was really, that was really effective. That was really powerful. Um, it still gives people voice, but because they're discussing um, all sorts of <laughs> things that are extraordinarily sensitive, um, you know, including like suicide ideation and um, recovery and all of these sort of traumatic things. I think that gives people a little bit of comfort knowing that it's not, you know, the, it's not necessarily their whole story, um, but what was important to it, so it's still getting conveyed. Um, we also have the Northampton Recovery Center, mm -hmm. um, which uh, Council President Shiara recommended um, reaching out to about as well. Um, and so I think that might be another, another place to start. And then a third, as I'm just listing off things, is um, the Western Mass, um, BIPOC um, Advisory Council, um, which is um, the founder is uh, Jose Adastra, um, who's been working with um, unhoused populations in, in Northampton for a very long time. Um, and so because they already have that, um, those relationships existing, they'd be able to sort of reach out. Um, I sort of see this as like at, at at best, this is going to be something like a snowball sample of, you know, sort of like, oh, we've reached out, to, you know, well, <clears throat> one of the questions that we can ask is, is there anyone that you know of that might also be willing to speak with us um, to sort of build that out? Because again, this is, this is going to be populations that have been typically underserved for a very long time <laughs> um, and who are not necessarily going to be super easy to just sort of pull at a, at a glance. Um, so those are the ones that I'm thinking of. I don't know about other folks. Carol? Yeah, um, I was thinking, well, I was thinking of the snowball sample and I was thinking of our final report and wanting to make that into a convenience sample from snow. Snowball is, is a standard, like you said, Dan, it's standard um, terminology in research uh, circles, but I just, looking ahead, I want to use another term. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so I'm thinking um, of safe passages. And to see if they I certainly haven't made contact yet. I wanted to run these by you guys. Um, to see if they would could identify anyone uh, who has been through interpersonal violence, who would be willing to talk with us in any form, in any form, you know, to testify in any form. Um, <clears throat> also the uh, CWC, um, I had written to the current director and I have not gotten a reply just to float this idea. Um, I could follow up with that if, um, if you thought that was important. The sexual assault network, the hot, hot hotline. I, it seems to me that um, it might be important if if this is um, an organization we're going to put on the list for outreach. It it might make sense for me to make an appeal to the director 
to see if any of staff who are on the hotline or counselors and volunteers who accompany um, folks to the police to be the witnesses rather than the women themselves, the people themselves. Actually, is that you're not nodding your heads? That's yeah, that, in yeah. agreement that that would be the testimony. Yeah, in a situation like that, <laughs> it's I think it's a really good idea to have the, the input of the bystander. Yeah, to sort of right. promote from the situation. Right. And I think it's also like, especially if it's, if it's something that's providing immediate care for people, like mm -hmm. in those situations, they might not be, or it, it would be surprising if they were in a space where they wanted to sort of yeah. dig in immediately as they're dealing. Oh with yeah, the exactly. Time. Exactly. Exactly. Um, those are, those are really good places. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Related to that also might be, um, working with Elisa Klein um, just because she has a lot of experience with domestic violence um, okay. and um, intimate partner violence and sexual assault. Um, and <laughs> she also has a ton of experience with restorative justice and transformative justice mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in addition. So that might be, that um, she might be another touch point um, in terms of just outreach where to where to find people and maybe maybe she knows of some and I'd also like to get her experiences as well um in this yeah I, I, good really good so for me uh so Carol talk for me is safe passage which mm -hmm. I think it's 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 good I mean I I drew so when related but not related so when when I was working I was ACLU person from Western Mass for related to the census. And one of the things that happened with the census is when COVID hit, all the field operations stopped, right? And it was a huge drama. And one of the things that we were able to do with some organizations in Western Mass and statewide, that we were able to talk with uh, directors and, some, and they were able to make a commitment that they're, you know, uh, people working with families, affected families, they would add to their workload doing like informing about the census, literally showing material about the census in their own language. And I think with Safe Patch, it can happen something similar. I mean, people working. Uh, uh, okay. They, they, they're, they're social workers or their counselors, and they may be willing to use the, 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 the one page that we're going to produce in a way that. Uh, you know, because they would they would be the ones in the better position than anybody else to know who would be in a good state of mind, who would be in a position of empowerment to be able to do it. Yes. Right. So I, 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 yeah, I, I agree with 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 Carol that safe passage would be a really good option. Um, other places that I was thinking is uh, schools, ESOL schools for immigrants and refugees in Northampton. Like ILI, Center for the Americans, uh, in the case of you know refugees and and and, and immigrants in in the city, mm -hmm. um, I, I remember then mentioning you know we whenever talk about uh, people who doesn't speak the language or have a damn like a, a, a extremely different experience than anybody else when they go down to them. The other place that I thought. Churches, and the reason why I'm saying churches is that specifically in downtown Northampton, you have the Quechua Church. Uh, at this point, I don't know how they are functioning, if they are doing anything online. Hopefully, so if that's the case, I, I think that would be a really good way to connect with a really specific um, demographic in the community. Uh, where you know Quechua is their first language, they are people that have been living for years here in the U.S. A lot of them live, are living in Northampton, so I think that would be good. And you know, we we always talk about shelters, mm -hmm. being able to connect, and I think that most of the time that that's going to be up to our connections with activists and advocates that are working in those places. Mm -hmm. um, and and when I when, when I was thinking about churches or when I was thinking about shelters, <clears throat> I I came to sort of a, to a question which I want to pose to you too. It's in the fact that how how do we manage to get testimonies that 
we can lower the amount of bias coming from the person who is administering the 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 the, the sort of the one pager taking the testimony right mm -hmm. it, it's it, that comes down to us stating that has to be verbatim if it's a uh, if it's a audio recording it has to be verbatim cannot be edited um, questions are only questions that have been established in in a step by step for us uh, how much liberty the interviewer has to do follow-up questions in relation to how the the uh, the narrative in the conversation with the person is going mm -hmm. and I think that's something that 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 we need to talk in some point yeah. oh Carol do you want to well, I, I guess I was going to ask you to expand your comments a little bit, Javier, on the, the, the bias. What, what are your thoughts on how things could get skewed from the testimony based on... Based, the, pater, based it, in paternalism. Yeah. Based, mm -hmm. it, that's usually what I mentioned, bias, right? Mm -hmm. um, I thought you meant to say this. I, I, you know, that feeling of, I mean, maybe I'm just... Thinking too much, looking too much into it, but I, I want to see a, a way as as much as we can to avoid that. I'll, I'll like the interviewer saying, "I think you wanted to say this." We don't want, for example, if it's a reading, it's a reading testimony that the interviewer is correcting anything, mm -hmm. right? So, and we 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 or um somebody who is interviewing sort of rephrase it. So, what you want to say is, I don't think that's 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 good. In this, I mean, what what do I know? But Carol, you know, way better than me about this. But I feel that anything that comes between the person giving the narrative and the messaging, anything that comes between the messaging and the people giving the narrative, can contaminate at the end the product. Sure. Of sure. Yeah. So I think, um, at least from my experience, I would say that this is sort of one of those things that you want to work with the people who are doing the interview to go over like how to interview well, because <laughs> it is a skill. Um, but that, you know, we want to, I'm hesitant to say like all questions have to be verbatim, like maybe that the main topical ones, but I think there's always going to be a follow-up and that's sort of where we where like that follow-up allows us to do um, quite a bit, I think in terms of getting real information, but it's going to be contextual. They're going to have to have some, um, you know, some agency in there. Um, but I think we can talk to people about like what makes good techniques for interviewing. Um, and especially for those that are going to be, you know, if it's, if it's, inter if it's recorded, that's a little easier, but for those that won't be, that aren't recorded, um, things like following up by asking questions. Um, so like, you know, you say, okay, what I heard you say is this, is that correct? And just establishing that as a procedure to make sure um, and to be open if, a, if somebody says, no, that's not what I meant. This is what it is. Just making sure that they're open to that correction too. Because um, yeah, I think that, that does happen too. Quite yeah, a bit. that's, that, I agree with that. And that's, that's really important when we, when I've done qualitative research, I've often gone back with, with the typed up testimony and sat with the person. We, we probably, we don't have the luxury of, of doing this but you can build it in. But I think what you're, you seem to be suggesting, Dan, is that we build it in when we talk to the person who's going to do the interview. That, and one thing we might add to that is to say, there are no right answers. We're not looking for a right answer. We're not looking, just in case the interviewer thinks that they need to tip things towards, you know, all yeah. police encounters are bad under all circumstances. And that's the kind of testimony they're trying to elicit. You know, we really want the, the person's own raw experience as they state it. So, you know, so saying that we're not looking for a right answer or, or a certain position, it's just the lived experience. It's very valuable to us to hear from people's lived experience as they remember it. Perfect. Uh, uh, do you feel that? I think I, I'm taking what Dan just said and what you just said, Carol. Mm -hmm. So I do think I agree that we may want to have some bullet points and guidance for people doing the interview. Yes. And the content is just what, what, you've, what you just stated, Carol, right? 
And I think that's that's going to be really useful. Uh, and also, I mean, remembering that everyone is coming to this in good faith, right? I mean, people are, are people who are going to be deploying this are have to be trusted. This is this is done in good faith, and and because if not, we would have serious trouble doing it, right? So, yeah, Ping, I saw your hand up. Is it not there anymore? That was intentional. Oh, yeah, I did have it up, but it was, um, my question was covered. Thanks. Absolutely. Cool. So, um, so that covers uh, organizations that we think, and most of those organizations are service providers, right? Service providers, activists, uh, working hand to hand with, with affected communities. That's literally what it is. Um, so we're gonna move to item number three in the agenda, which is a, a workshop and the preparation of outreach document using Carol's first draft. Noah, would it be possible for you to share in the screen uh, Carol's uh, draft? Yeah, sure. Um... Thank you. Yeah. Make sure. Okay. Can y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have a second one? I'm just looking like I'm looking at the document but I don't see so I'm not sure if I'm on the same one because I, I had made a couple suggestions as we were getting set up <laughs> oh um, um I don't think you're in the same one Dan because if you take a look in the upper right corner yeah yeah I didn't see myself that's when I was like hey um I clicked on the one that is in the chat Okay, that's maybe what I did. I was looking at the one in the emails. Oh uh, yeah, I might have um, copied it and. Yeah, let's remember that. Probably, I mean, we can do all all what we're gonna be doing now only here, right? Immediately when this is done, the sharing ability of the document has to be turned off. Mm -hmm. Oops. Don't close it. All right, I'll just make. And that's change. you then, right? Yeah, I'll just make the changes again. Cool. I just did editing, just mm -hmm. in case. Um, uh, oops, not what I wanted. Sorry. Suggesting. So the first thing is just I think um, instead of just saying our outreach group, that we just say we are in. Yeah. Right. Um, just to make that like a little more streamlined, and then mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. other. Um, suggestion that I have is just the first bullet point be um, so that it, the, the very first thing is just this is going to be shared with the commission. <laughs> okay, yes, I like that better. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> this is where yeah, it's right. it'll likely be allowed, uh, read aloud. Um, in Are you, you want to get rid of that or no? Meetings. Yeah. Um, no, I like that. I just wanted to add, like, it'll be a pub, like played in public in meeting. Public, in public meeting. Um, it'll be stored anonymously. Uh, it'll be stored anonymously if that's what you want or under a pseudonym or made up name. Uh, and then, yeah, those are like, um, yeah. And then um, yeah, this one, like, I think we just need to find a way to provide um, the contact information that we want them to use just so that it's all handy in the same place. Um, but that's obviously <laughs> a broader discussion. Um, I think. Right. Right. Um, I mean, or, or it could be on another sheet or like if we have like, if we just, if we could write a follow-up sheet of. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that's better. Um, so this is a question. So, which is not related to this, so I'm gonna hold that one. So, um, so maybe wanna make a comment in relation to what is public record? Mm. Um, 
and because essentially anybody can access that right and that's that's sort of the point but same public record doesn't necessarily uh rings a bell in that way no it doesn't yeah and even more you know i have experienced that many times when you do an evaluation in immigration you ask if the person has suffered domestic violence and many times sometimes people said no and you know we don't understand that domestic violence is a sort of fancier way to say, did your husband or wife hit you? Right, right. And yeah. after you are just making casual conversation and they tell you how they were abused. It's like, okay, so language. Um, Thank you for writing all this down. And Carol, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah, well, welcome. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, no, this was, I really like that. Those are the only things that I could think of. Um, oh, that the content can be requested and accessed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Does, does that make sense to folks too? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I like, I, one of the things that I like about the document, it's really honest. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we may, you know, we, because of the level of honesty, we may get more no's than yeah, but that's a point. I mean, we want to be able to be as transparent as we can in relation to how absolutely about what the process is and what the risks are, because, you know, the whole purpose in having a document like this is because there've been many abuses of vulnerable people and marginalized people over, over all through history. And it really necessitates being absolutely transparent about what you might get out of this and what, how it might affect you negatively and that you, you can opt out at any time. Yeah. I think, I think that's the biggest, like for me, that was just sort of like the bigger one is like, and this is something that I've been going back and forth with city folks for quite a bit, just trying to make sure what are the actual requirements here um, in order to protect people, because we are asking them to be extraordinarily vulnerable in a very, very <laughs> turbulent time. Um, you know, it could be personally turbulent for them in dealing with the impacts of, of you know, either the pandemic or um, obviously their interactions with police, but also any other thing. And then also in the structure that we have where there are accusations or allegations against the police officer or multiple police officers in Northampton for retaliation, um, right. this becomes a difficult space. Um, so we wanna offer the maximum, the maximum protection and also just the, the maximum, um, sort of safety that we can for them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This looks beautiful. Um, do you think that we should, we should do, well, this can end, end, end it up as a two pager, but maybe the second section or the back part of the, of the page, we can write some sort of best, best practice uh, for whoever is doing the interview. And this is a question that I, I'm going to pose to you too. Um, would be good uh, to be able to have pair either the, the, the pseudonym or the alias or the real name of the person with the person who did the, the interview. Mm -hmm. So because I'm assuming that, so for example, if we talk to people who are deeply working in the community, like Jose Adasar is one of them, um, and we need to get back to that person. I'm not going to get back to that person. Dan is not going to get back, right? Uh, we we should communicate with the person who did the interview. Is that correct or um, or not? I'm just going to... Hmm. So let's imagine why we might want to get back to the interviewer. Um, let's see. Hmm. I mean, it, I also think about the, the situations of like when, um, when someone would need to get back to us um, or when someone would reach out to, to us and we need to get back to them. I think it's, it's a little bit, I mean, if it was an urgent issue and we're, we're having to, to play telephone where a person reaches out to Jose, Jose then reaches out to us. We then do a thing. If they're asking for something to be redacted or removed, we do it. Then we reach out back to Jose, they reach back them, or and God forbid there be a clarifying question that we need to ask. 
uh, because then, you know, instead of, you know, maybe four steps of communication, we're now at like 12. Um, so I think maybe leave, like, I think we should probably, we should still, you know, sort of keep track of who's doing the interviews. I think that's just general good practice. Um, but I think we can also, um, I mean, I think we could leave it open. They can contact the person that they're comfortable with or reach out directly to us. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I agree with that. And um, I can give my phone number as, mm -hmm. as a contact. I mean, it's, you know, it, because I work with uh, deeply with the immigrant community, everybody has my number. So I, I don't feel uncomfortable giving away my number at, for mm -hmm. any person that would be get contact uh, directly with us or anybody who would opt to get just getting to with the person who uh, did the interview. You know, the only the only problem I can see with having a person who was interviewed contact one of us or Javier or, or Dan or me is that it it might be inhibiting if we are the people uh, that they contact to say, you know, I came away from that interview and I felt like I was re-experiencing the whole thing. And I really, I don't, this public record thing, I just, you know, I I'm, have second thoughts. I'd like you to not use my testimony. Do you think, I'm just going to, instead of stipulating, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think that that person calling one of us would be very inhibiting because that person would be afraid of disappointing us because we were the interviewers? Should we have designate someone else within the commission to take the interview, to, to take a notification that, that a testimony is being pulled? Um, I don't know. I mean, I haven't done a ton of, um, I haven't done a ton of qualitative research myself. I've done very, very, I've, do, I've done some, but not a ton. <laughs> um, so I haven't had to sort of deal with, with that end of it, uh, like in experience and in practice. I think my own sort of gut tells me that I think it's, I think it might even be easier for them to reach out to someone who had done the interview mm -hmm. um, just because they've already built up that trust relationship. Yeah, good point. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, I agree with that, but the issues that you're raising, Carol, it's extremely important. Um, and I think that in, when we write best practices, which is, you know, it's going to be just five short bullet points, mm -hmm. making, making it clear and center this in empowering the person giving the testimony. Right, exactly. Pushing the interviewer to state and restate and double restate that you're in, you are in charge of this. You can pull this out at any point. This is your narrative. You own it. Yes. Yeah. This is not ours. It's yours. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. you you have full control over it. I think that that's that sort of the important piece of it. Um, and it also as a preventive measure to to try to minimize cases where somebody would feel self conscious to pull it out, like being really clear about this is your narrative right. you are the one who is who who owns this you have the absolute right to do whatever you want with it if you don't right. want it so you said that's it so are we then agreeing that if there is that hesitation after the fact that the person would contact um the interviewer and, and request that that person contact one of us? Or are you saying that you, the person, the interviewee would contact directly? I think we should invite them to do either. Yep. Give them, uh, give them either option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to knock on wood and be the eternal optimist and say <laughs> that hopefully this won't come up, but just to have the pathway be as open as possible um, for whatever is, for whatever the issues are. Um, and I'm also seeing um, chat uh, chat message from uh, Yaping. I don't know, Yaping, do you wanna unmute and 
say what you had had written out? Oh, sure. It's not a big um, piece of feedback, although I saw um, I was just commenting that the phrase down under benefits when police are helpful and when they might not be to me just came across as, um, you know, centering more of a perspective of uh, painting police as benevolent as a po and I think if the commission wanted to represent a different perspective that uh, maybe a different phrasing that that doesn't frame it that way would be better. And then also the sentence up in the first paragraph, such incidents have may have left you feeling vulnerable or feeling protected. I think using the, to me using the term protected in relation to police from the Policing Review Commission also slants a little bit towards this, you know, dominant mainstream society narrative that um, the police are here to protect us instead of, um, you know, a, a commission that understands that police um, come out of white supremacy. Um, that was all just slight language feedback. So what about if we change it? Let me see. If we change it to, you might feel empowered to be able to introduce our thinking and planning related to the presence of policing in our community. Mm hmm I mean, I'm asking everybody, including yapping on this, because in that way, you are not advocating for this benevolent action or negative action. It's, it is what it is you experience. All the whole spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Chino. I'm busy, sweetie. Chino. <laughs> My dog wants to attend the meeting. <laughs> yeah, oh, buddy. Dan's, Dan's cat already did. <laughs> yeah, she, she comes by as soon as I sit down and turn Zoom on. Yeah, cat, cats love Zoom. I think they do. Yeah, she's just ready. She's just like, oh, this is great. You'll pay attention to me. You have to. You're stuck in a space. <laughs> um. So that first paragraph, we need to do something yeah. there. Let's see, that sent that one sentence. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe you can just uh, delete it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think I agree that I don't necessarily see a lot of potential there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to add sort of like little bullet points that we can build out. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about best practices for interviewing um, down at the bottom on page two um, so far. So I just have um, communication follow-ups. And so I probably want to have um, something right at the start about um, expecting. Did I switch out of editing? No, I'm still suggesting. Um, so um, respecting respondent um, and so very clearly um, honor for uh, well start with um, stories. Any question? Um, listen carefully to their. So if we say listen carefully to, um, to their stories and um, Repeat back and confirm answers. Nice. I'm just going to charge anyone for anything they reveal.
So we just have sort of repeat back and confirm answers. What I heard you say was, is this correct? Listen carefully to the stories being presented. Do not assume there's a right or wrong answer to any question and be respectful of respondent and their stories. Do not judge anyone for anything they reveal in their statements. Um, Good, I like that. Uh, in terms of the <clears throat> patient follow-ups, um, so that would include, um, so we wanna provide respondents um, contact information for the commission um, with local resources. It could be just websites, I think maybe, or, you know, um, if they have, you know, if we're working with these different groups, if they have uh, material that they would like to give to, <laughs> to give out to folks so they have access to that, right? We're going to be talking about all sorts of things around substance use, around um, housing insecurity, food insecurity, any of those things. Mm -hmm. So if they have resources um, that they would also like us to share, so we can have like a little packet of, you know, like, here's the follow up. Um, mm -hmm. for you so right right after the interview you know sort of going through going through sort of like all right here's the answers that you gave us you know this is just in general no judgments about what you said but here's some follow-up and these are some other groups that that we're working with and information about them if you want it yeah um so mm -hmm. flyers and things like that with access to resources um is there anything else that folks are thinking of? Well, you're reminding me, this is not about our task here, the form, editing the form, but you're reminding me when you're talking about resources that having read the, um, was it a, the, the arrest? Something was posted on the share drive. There was three different, three years of incidents incident reports and, you know, like what, what the police were called out for. And I was struck by how many of them, it seemed like 50% of them were alcohol related. So I guess my question is, have we put organizations on this list? We haven't really, that, um, that, would be advocates for people with alcoholism. Yeah, I'm taking note of that. I, I know a couple of those organizations in town mm -hmm. um, that would be good to have them on the table. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Northampton Recovery Center does. Okay. Does that, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I don't want to like um because I, I mean i know that they do addiction but i don't know if they mm -hmm. they set i don't know what they have a, a structure around alcohol versus other substances mm -hmm. or even if that matters um, for mm -hmm. their patient and their work. yeah it actually might not yeah. yeah yeah um and i believe that the wildflower allowance uh, oh no wildflower alliance i don't know why it's impossible for me to say that um the rlc what used to be the rlc they they did stuff with that as well but again i don't know if they have specific targeted information for just alcohol yeah i mean also um i th i think at some point and sooner than later we can make uh we can use this this space to have a meeting with people that may deploy this mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm certain that among them we can come out with a with a substantial and robust list of uh, referrals if needed mm -hmm. i mean i'm pretty sure they know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's beautiful because they are you know service provider they, that can service provider and that people working close with affected communities they know who is doing good work right right, right. good point I really appreciate then you doing all the, the second page. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, so right now, so we, we, we mentioned this a lot, but we haven't talked about the specific questions mm -hmm. that are going to open the narrative. And, and 
So I will refer to Carol on this. So okay. what kind of questions to open <laughs> this kind of conversation, this kind of a testimony mm -hmm. would be more, more, more better suited in a way that is not going to tilt the balance in one way or another, but it's going to start a conversation in a way that is going to be open to whatever the person giving their own narrative. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the first, uh, the first sentence in this, in this one quote, one pager uh, is in the, we, we have to say who we are, you know, what, what's our, what's our um, social location, if you will, in this process. And we're part of a citizens uh, commission, you know, charged with the task of taking a look at how the NPD contributes or fails to contribute to the uh, public safety. And um, by the way, sidebar comment to be continued uh, in depth at a later date. I read an article the other day that somebody sent me that had a term called thick public safety. And what it referred to is not just having cops, you know, maintain safety and security in the community. Thick public safety means everybody's involved by their own estimation of what safe is, safe and secure is in a community. So, I mean, that'd sort of be an interesting conversation at some point. But I think it, it does have some relevance here because we could say, you know, in our introduction before we ask question, open-ended questions. Um, so as a commission, as commission members, we know that we need people who've had direct experience uh, with the police one or many times to educate us on, um, what it's like, you know, what really goes on, you know, how it feels, what, how it contributes or doesn't contribute to your well being when you're in an incident or following up on an incident. And that, that's why we're, we have been led to uh, invite people like you to uh, tell your story. And then you go into all the, um, all the precautions, you know, all of the, um, the, the rights of the, of the respondent, you know, And then the first, but you're still wanting the first question, right? What's the first question? First question is very open-ended. What happened to you that, that resulted in police being present? Or do we not want to ask that? What was it, or what was it like when there was an incident that you were involved in and the police were, were called or were, or were present? Yeah. Followed up. I mean, I might include like, um, so sort of along that line, just, um, you know, can you, can you describe an interaction that you've had with the police? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Just, can you describe that interaction? And then the follow up, you know, um, you know, as, as they're sort of giving information is going to be that sort of, can you tell, like, latch on to something that they give? And then can you tell me more about that experience? Um, did that experience make you feel safe? Did that experience make you feel protected? Um, yeah, uh, do you have other experiences with the police um, where you felt similar or where you felt different about the mm -hmm. interaction? Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, I still, I still, I harp on this. I still want to ask the question, what would make you feel safer in this country? Right, right. And I don't think that's necessarily the question you want to lead with. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but certainly it could be, I mean, I think it's, it could be the last question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we should have three questions. Uh, the last one is the one that you just said. And, and you know, opening with, with uh, if you have you had any experience with mm -hmm. police enforcement in the, in the community. And I think that's, that's going to open. Mm -hmm. 
and depending if <laughs> if the first if the first uh, narrative it's the first story it's negative or positive you can say well have you have a positive experience have you have a negative experience depending on what uh, and other I, yeah other yeah. experience and I think the rest the the, the the all in the middle is conversational right exactly exactly so I don't think we need more than the, those three questions. No, I think you can get quite an interview out of that. Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to type, so I missed the first. So I have the, can you describe your experience interacting with the Northampton Police Department? Mm -hmm. So the second one is depending if it was, the first one was negative or positive, have you had any other different experience? Um. I think there was a prior one, a prior one before you go into inquiring about other experiences that Dan said there was a question about, did that experience help you to feel safe or not safe? Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think we need to rephrase that question though. The, did that experience help you feel safe? Um, mm -hmm. Because that's a yes or no question. And that, mm -hmm. that stops that conversation. What about in which way that experience helped you to feel safe or unsafe? So did you experience, um, sorry, did that experience help you to feel safe or unsafe? How about to what extent did this experience contribute to your sense of safety or lack of safety? Or to what extent? I mean, that opens it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Because if they say, well, I'll tell you what, I, I froze when the police came. I, I absolutely froze. You could always say, could you? <laughs> I could did you? not. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, what if we did, um, did that experience help you to feel more or less or in what ways did that experience help you feel more or less safe? Yeah. In what ways? Yeah, I like that. In what ways? That experience. I just want to change the make or help to probably make. So in what ways did that experience make you feel more or less mm -hmm. safe? Mm -hmm. um, and then um, have you had additional experiences mm So just have you had additional experiences with the Northampton Police Department that you would like to talk about? If so, what were they? And Just uh, how do you think uh, how do you think community safety in Northampton can be improved? As the last, but as the final, yeah, as the final question. <laughs> uh, maybe that's getting a little bit away. That's kind of inviting uh, comment. Terry on the them. Is that what we want for the final? I, I thought we were wanted to stay with the person's with some personal experience about what you know, what are their thought what are their thoughts on um yeah, or mean, could help to create yeah. safety. Maybe it's the same question, just asked differently. Yeah. Um, I mean I can say um to what what could be done to improve public safety. No, I don't. I wouldn't say public safety. No, I, no, I, I think per person, personal safety, personal, 
personal. Yeah, I mean, being honest, I like the way how it was written because it's it's the person who says I have this opinion. I think this could be better in this way for me. Mm-hmm. It's really simple. It's, it's sort of sort of a, stra- a straightforward uh, question. And I like that we end in that because I do feel that people who are being policed, they know that they're being policed. People who are being targeted, it's not that they don't know the right. They know the right. You're, when somebody's doing something to you that should not happen and shouldn't be done, you know that. In mm-hmm. the, independently, you can name a specific law or a specific civil right or whatever you you know your rights you are being violated as a person so i think even opening the window for them to just state mm-hmm. what uh they their thought about what may, how safety could be improved in their hands i think is important i agree and it's a good ending question what are your thoughts yep what are your th- what are your thoughts on different factors or different different things that could help you to feel safe or safer in this community. So could you just repeat that again? I just want to make sure that I have it out correctly. Yeah. What, uh, what are your thoughts on, um, Do we want to say changes or it just factors, factors that could contribute to your feeling safe or safer or safer in this community? So do we want to say what would make you feel safer in Northampton? What would make you? Yeah. Yeah. That keeps it. Thank, thanks, Dan. You're keeping me more straightforward. here. <laughs> I am. I am the same way. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, in qualitative researchers, always in their manuals, they always say, write, use language in your, in any of your questioning uh, that is understood by somebody with an eighth grade education. And I think that's really good advice because you might get some really good testimony from someone who doesn't know a lot of big words, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's it's interesting, uh, and and as a to give you some sort of background, one of one of the things that we do, I work a lot is with undocumented families, right? Doing family preparedness documents. Mm-hmm. That's uh, who is going to be able to take care of the children if mom or dad are detained by ICE. And the reality is that people who are being targeted day after day. They becoming survivors yeah. of, of a of a depressive system, and many times to be able to do that, you just cannot keep stopping and rush, rationalizing it. You just keep going, and you don't have the chance to stop to think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And many times when we're doing the the family uh, preparedness documents, where I'm doing them with families, many times that's a place where mom and dad are being able to stop. They, they don't have to, to, to be afraid that they are not going to get home that, that day. They are seated, planning, being proactive in something terrible that may happen, mm-hmm. but it's something that they can take uh, some control over. And people, when they have that, that sort of minute to be able to reflect, it's incredible the amount, the amount of uh, experience that they, 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 can, they can talk to you about. Mm-hmm. And I feel that even though we are not looking for this to be sort of like a third experience. I think we cannot do this without collecting their own experience and their own expertise in what they need. Precisely. Exactly. Yeah. That that we're asking them what we think that they are experts in best practice. Yes. I mean, that's what we want to convey in that last question. I think. Noah, can you scroll down in the other section of the document that you're turning? Uh, yeah, Ping and people in the audience want to see it. If you go down to the second page. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cool. This this is looking really, really, really good. Um, 
you know, this is this. I mean, lucky that I have you, Carol. Lucky me that I have you, Dan. Uh, <laughs> well, I think the three of us are a good team for for this task. You know, definitely. Cool. Are are we happy with? Well, I'm more than happy, but are we happy with the questions? And I like the the best practice for interviewing. I love it. I think it's really good. Yeah, I think if you um, so, I'll spend a little bit of time just to flesh that out more. I'll take that as a task. Mm -hmm. uh, Perfect. Do just so that it's yeah, I mean, it, it's not bad, but as like a as a bullet point list. But we can do better. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing that's sort of related to this is also how we want to reach out to those to those groups now that we have them, and if we want to have a sort of like a template email of like this is who we are, this is what we're doing, here's some background. Um, we have four questions that we'd like to... Yeah, so let's do something. So I'm gonna draft that email. Okay. I'm gonna send it to Noah. Mm -hmm. um, and Noah can, can send it to you and everybody's gonna get in touch with the organizations that, is, that, um, that we, we mentioned today, including uh activists i mean i i don't see any problem with us coordinating because you know if somebody gets two or three emails from us so be it <laughs> i'm not worried about that uh that's that's that just mean that that person really has to come next time to talk to us to deploy this so uh i will do that and i will send it tomorrow afternoon to noah good uh so it's 8 36 mm -hmm. We're gonna and you then are sort of clean up a little bit the, this section of the document. Yeah. Thank you so much. And and we are gonna move to next item in the agenda, which is well, we sort of did it by the last statement. Possible strategies to deploy the outreach document. We said that uh in, in best case scenario we're meeting we're, ha we're sort of complicating to come here to uh, people who are possibly deploying this. This is going to also go out to the full commission mm -hmm. uh, because people like Alex and others have expressed that they want to do also outreach. <laughs> um, and after that, probably, and we're conscious of this, we may revisit the document depending on the feedback that we're getting. Um, mm -hmm. What we also might want to do um, is sort of turn this preface that we have our, our sort of statement and then the four questions into a, a form as well. Um, I'm not 100 like a Google form. Um, I'm not 100% sure what some of the folks have meant when they say I want this to for outreach I'm imagining and again I don't know um, but like if the city councilors were to distribute this to their constituents through an email list like they can't do all of those interviews. Um, but we can ask for information and they can become part of the public record in a way that doesn't require attendance to a specific meeting as well. That's right. Um, I mean, let's be, let's be clear. To be able to deploy this, it's, it's not going to be a requirement for people to come next meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that because we're coming to this from uh, uh, good faith, I trust everybody in the commission and, and even more people like you, Dan, and Carol to... Uh, to give this to people that you consider are going to be able to to reach out the the communities that we want to reach out. It's mm -hmm. that simple. I I don't see it as a sort of a brainer. Um, but I, I just think having an online form and then having a very easily printable form for yeah. people to to fill out is going to be really important. Absolutely. Um, just so that there's some flexibility there. And I imagine that we'll also be having conversations, you know, so individually we'll have, be having conversations with these organizations too, as they're coming to us, you know, cause we're going to send out sort of a cold call. Hey, <laughs> can you help us find some people? I'm sure they're going to have questions back of like who, what, you know, those yeah. sort of like. And, and I think that that's going to be part of inviting those organizations, those organizations and individuals in the next, next meeting. Right. Okay. Probably, yeah. probably we're going to, we may modify in one way or another slightly the document based on the feedback of this, yeah. the people participating. And, and you know, we're open to that. Um, yeah. Cool. I'm going to say a uh, temp check, which is 839. Um, 
I just, uh, it just occurred to me in terms of organizations, are we going to reach out to Pioneer Valley Workers Center to Margaret Sawyer or somebody over there? I, I have done work with Margaret. So oh, you've I'm already, yeah. Out to her. Okay, I great. Mean, I will get in touch with her. Okay. I'm thinking about that list and I, I've, I've written down, I think most of them in a handwriting that I can read later, I hope. Excellent. Um, and everybody here feel uh, entitled to invite. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have one-to-one -one conversations. You can send emails to organizations after I send you this out of the email. But every, oh. anybody here, it's encouraged to invite as, as, as many people <laughs> that are relevant to this conversation for next time. Yeah, I was thinking about reaching out to Mana for the, the, the folks that run the soup kitchen. Oh, excellent. excellent. Yeah. And also Touch the Sky um, Pioneer Valley, who works with um, their group that works with um, unhoused and housing insecure um, individuals in the community. And they do um, a lot of mutual aid, but they're out there also building those relationships. So hopefully they can, they can serve as a touch point for folks as well. And I know that they, they had reached out and got some folks um, access to technology to make public comments to uh, for the larger meetings. So, um, and, and I just thought of another one too, that I might reach out to is I don't know who the point person at ServiceNet is to be, that's an agency, of course, rather than an advocate per se, but they're setting up the, they set up the shelter at the, at the first church. Yeah. So I mean, they probably have a worker there who's responsible for, for the for the guests for the residents. Yeah. Yes, that that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, still have Carol. I still have concerns in relation to the email that our soft committee got. Uh, in relation to that. But but probably we're um, we're going to be able to touch base about it on, um, which, the next meeting. The next meeting, which is you know. Um, organize, uh, established organizations that have stakes in, you know, the, in contracts with the with oh, contracted agencies that the, are with, pro, with, you mean provider agencies? Yeah, as that, as opposed to advocacy advocacy organizations. Yeah, mostly organizations that get a cut of the money mm -hmm. ac across the the valley in in, in Innerhampton for doing this job. Mm hmm. Yeah, I can I can hear that. Yeah, that's a different that's a different pool of people. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I was gonna say, um, without firsthand knowledge, um, I've heard some concerning things with um, about ServiceNet um, in terms of sort of how they provide services and the the sort of the way that they do it. Um, and so I think it might be important for us. I mean, we can still reach out to them, but I think it's going to be important for us to also establish with all of the groups that we work with sort of what their commitments are and what their policies are. Um, yeah. Just understand those groups as well. And again, like I, I haven't had any firsthand experience with this, so it's all coming second, third hand um, in terms of, of service net specifically, but um, there are some critiques of them. And I think they're fairly standard for a lot of service organizations that are municipal um, in that vein and that they you know just reproduce the same experiences and they work really closely with the with the police department itself which then creates a whole bunch of sort of tensions in terms of you know will can those organizations be self-critical and critical of their their partners um or, or their or their role their role in serving yeah i mean i I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, yes, there's, there's, there's potentially an inherent conflict, not just with ServiceNet, but at any contracted provider agency. If they are the conduit, if they become our conduit into talking with very vulnerable people, there's an inherent conflict because people have a particular, people, let's say, who are looking for shelter through these agencies, um, it raises for them what's going on here? I'm being asked by this provider to talk to these people. 
You know, what's the agenda? You know, it just kind of muddies things, basically. Uh, right. Potentially. Potentially. Potentially, it does. Yeah. yeah. So I retract my suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated thing, too, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. Um, and, and I think it goes to the core of what we're trying to do. I mean, the basic of what we're trying to do is not to keep the established status quo of what, how things had been doing and deploying or Hampton, right? And and as you said, there is uh, p organizations and people who have historically work to uh, enact and make this the pervasive system keep going in one way or another. I don't have any any experience, bad or good experience with them. It's complicated to call them to the table because at the end of the day, I'm always thinking in the back of my head, is this testimony real or just intended because they have they are high stakes on the table and money involved in it? And, and I think no small part of this is also going to be, again, like these organizations have to have engendered trust in mm -hmm. the people who are, who are doing it. Because we also have, and I think maybe this is going to be um, part of the, the sort of best practices is to communicate that the respondents don't get anything out of this. Um, you know, in terms of like, there's nothing, like they don't get more, they don't get access to services or their responses should not get them denied services. And so making well, it really clear, um, yeah, you know, that. That's the, that's the inherent conflict that I was considering, Dan, you know, that, that if a provider asks you about your willingness, if you just got shelter one night and you've been on the streets for a long time waiting for a shelter bed and a provider asks you, Oh, would you be interested in talking to this citizen commission? They're interested in your experience with policing. You know, it sets up a kind of a conflictual. It's not clean. It's, it's not. Okay. It's not clean because you know the the expectation might be, well, am I going to get more services out of this, or am I going to be kicked out if I don't do it? If I, I don't want to talk to these people. Well, it becomes transactional. Yeah, it transact. Yeah, or, or perceive per it transactional. Per perceive. That's very well stated. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, so it's eight forty-seven. So I want. Uh, we're really good on this. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, so I w I would like to check with you guys for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm pulling out the calendar. So we so next Monday is Martin Luther King. Tuesday is the full commission. Tuesday is the full commission. Uh, the twentieth is inauguration day. <laughs> it's an eventful week. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um. um and I I I'm pretty flexible, so I don't want to throw any date on this. So I will let Carol Dan if. Uh, because I'm extremely flexible on it, I would I can do whatever they do you, you you want. So I don't want to. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with um, Monday. Like, I'm fine with Martin Luther King. Um, Is that a holiday? It's a state holiday. Um, I think it's a federal holiday too. Um, but I'm fine with it. With 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 working on this. Uh, I would be too if it's daytime. Yeah, I can do that. Javier, what does that mean to you, though? I'm. I will do whatever you want to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, January eighteen. What time? Um. I'm going to say anytime after like 11 a.m. is going to be good for me. I don't know what other folks have for. Yeah. For yeah. Time. I, I could do any, any time of day up until about three o'clock. I have an eye appointment where they're going to dilate my pupils and I'll be sitting here with my sunglasses on. So, okay. you know, on the screen. <laughs> so um, is what there time before that? What about 12? Sounds fine with me. Dan? Yeah, that works for me. Excellent. So, <laughs> Noah. Hey. <would> it... Hi. 
<laughs> um, I, I'm going to start my question with a, to, with a preamble. I'm really sorry, Noah. Really, really sorry. Okay. Would it be? <laughs> so this is uh, so. How long? Uh, so no. First, uh, would it be possible for you to clear that meeting? Um. Yes. I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I. Yes. But is that as an an understood vacation day for you? It is. It is a day off for me. Okay. <laughs> It'd be really nice. I'm. I'm gonna be um traveling. So I'll be seeing my mom on the 20th. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm planning on like being there um, on Monday. So yeah, I, but I don't, I don't want to be the only thing that gets in the way of you scheduling it. I just, I mean, Noah, we can, we can, we can also, do another day. Uh, yeah. We can also run the meeting. I can, I can be the sort of admin for it um, and record, like start the meeting and hit record. Okay. So okay. we can still have the time off. We can still have this meeting, and it'll still happen publicly. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That, yeah. That that, that feels that feel that feels better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, y'all. I really appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Excellent. So January eighteen at twelve. So how long do we want to do it? An hour and a half. Yeah, I think so. That um, would be fine. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, as agenda items. Let me see. So we're gonna keep. So we're gonna. So we're gonna do it really. I'm gonna write a really general uh, agenda for the day. Mostly, I'm gonna keep as a main point the workshop, and probably finishing outreach document with feedback of uh, whoever we invite to the meeting specifically, and that's gonna be the core of the meeting. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and after that, um. I'm going to just allocate a second point about the feedback about deployment from everybody in that meeting. So it's not only that they are going to be commenting, but also giving their opinion about how the best way to deploy it and, you know, in their own context. I think um, in general, because we have, you know, I mean, our report is due March 18th. <laughs> mm -hmm. Precious little time mm -hmm. between now and then. Um, but I also do want to bring up that we do have two more public hearings. Um, and so an agenda item for the meeting on the 19th is also going to be about public hearings and when we want to hold those. Okay. Um, I know initially um, there, uh, there was conversation about sort of when we would hold them and how do we hold them at times or on days where more people can participate. So it might be something like a, um, and we don't. We also don't need the entire commission to be present um, in order to hold these public hearings. Um, so we can also start to. I think it's going to be useful to sort of pitch, you know, maybe daytime meeting or on a weekend, um, something outside of um, the sort of the the sort of like after work hours. Do you uh, do you want that to be sort of a, a we can add it as an. Uh, agenda item for our meeting yeah because we're going to have all these people here and i think that would be great feedback yes excellent exactly. so i'm going to add that too yep cool um excellent um is there anything else new business that we should talk about do you want the, so, at the same time sorry Noah. do you want the meeting to be at the same time on the 18th at noon Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, for, uh, from 12 to 1.30. Awesome, thank you. Carol? So just so I understand, between now and next Monday, are we actually making contact? Are we, well, we need, a, we need a flyer, I guess. We're not making, between now and next Monday, we're not making contact with these organizations, right? Or we are? Uh, we, we are. are we're we, sending we the, are. the invites, yeah. We, we, the invites, but but we will be getting back to them about when we would invite them into a meeting, right? Or would that be Monday? That would be Monday. That would be tomorrow, Monday. So, yeah, tomorrow. So I'm going to draft the email. I'm going to send it to you tomorrow. Okay. And then you do the, your, your personal outreach. Okay. All right. Um, let me see something here. Um.
Yes. Okay. Um, so now, are you sure you're okay about January 18? Because now I, I really feel bad. No, oh. um, no, no. They're, they're, uh, Noah's going to go off. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Oh, my God. Gonna, my memory. We got this. So we don't. We don't... <laughs> okay. We're all set. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. So I think we're done for today. Five minutes before time. Right. Um, thank you so much to everybody here. Thanks, Dan, Carol, mm -hmm. Yapping, Hildegard, everybody. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Noah. Arrow. Yes. Javier. Yes. Dan. Yes, please. Awesome. <laughs> Motion to adjourn is passed. Thank you so much. Everybody. All right, stay well. I like working with you guys. Very Bye, Carol. Bye, Bye Noah. Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye.